Oh my God, Kristen. Ellie, I've been, nice to meet you. Nice to finally, I mean, I think I know you. Like you have no idea how much I know about you. <laughs> I know. Oh my gosh, how much kids. of my life is online? <laughs> no, I know about your kids. I know about your, your, your husband. I know, yeah, a lot. <laughs> okay. So I've been preparing and super excited about this, this chat for like two weeks. So I'm super, super pumped, super happy that you finally, you know, accepted to, to come and hang with me here at Tech Immigrants and warm welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. And my goal is to hopefully drill, you know, get you to tell your story the way I think I know it, because it's mind blowing. And the reason, like, you know, why am I that special? But I think the reason is that there's so many people that might be in the same shoes that you walked in and might not know what next step to take or what resource or whatever. And you kind of done all the work, <laughs> you know? So, you know, I'm really, really excited for you to be here. And again, welcome. And I'm going to start this off by my lead, right? Okay. I want you to tell our, our, our viewers or anybody that's watching, listening, what, what, do, you, what do you do, Kristen, right now, like for work? What do, you, what do you do? Yeah, so I work at Xbox for Xbox product services. And for people who are totally not in tech at all, what I usually say is I put lines on charts and I make buttons work. <laughs> and that's, that's really it in a nutshell. But which lines on the charts is when you plug in your Xbox and you go play your game and you go to sign in and like something goes wrong and you're like, did I type my password wrong? What happened? And you're like, you do it again. And like, the problem is not you. The problem is somewhere out there in the world. And you're like, dang it, Xbox. All I wanted was to play Fortnite. And like, that experience is rough, right? So I work on a full stack uh, web development team and we work with other teams and basically we take all the information we can about the user experience. We put it up on charts so that when things break, it is hopefully really quick and easy to find the right person to fix the problem quickly. So yeah, that's what I do in a nutshell. But you're not just on that team. You lead that team, correct? <laughs> That's true, yes. Okay. So when I started, so, I just put the lines on the charts and mm -hmm. made the buttons work. And over time, as the project's grown and we've added more engineers and we've taken on more responsibilities, I've also been a part of helping to grow that team and mentor the new people coming in. And at some point, my boss was like, do you want to just be the lead for this? Like you're kind of doing that already. And I was like, oh, oh yeah, sure. I, I could, I could do that. So yeah, I, I lead that team and uh, yeah, love my team. They're awesome. And it's, it's been pretty great. How many, how many people on your team? There are eight of us all together. And then depending on what we're working on, we work with other teams or we'll borrow a developer or we'll loan out a developer, but usually it's around eight of us working across two to five projects. Two to five projects, eight people. And most people that probably like, what's the Xbox? Xbox is pretty much like the number one gaming platform in the world made by Microsoft. So, <laughs> and it's so, so I think right like and you know on paper right when I was like if, if, if anybody were like right now I have like your LinkedIn open in a small screen so like I expanded it you've been at Microsoft for four years and nine months and there's all these roles software engineer lead blah, blah. but four years it's like oh my god yeah Kristen you know she's this you know, I mean, computers, just this deep person that 
I mean, that's what she's, she was born to do. Like, that's what she's, four years is a lot of time, right? Is that true? I mean, you always wanted to do that. Oh, no, I had no idea what any of this world was. And that's, I mean, you've got my LinkedIn open. You can see some very <laughs> divergent experiences <laughs> from before four years ago. Mm-hmm. So I feel like I need to give credit where it's due of like, I love this. It's awesome. It feels like something that I was made to do and that I really enjoy. But I definitely have had other jobs prior to this that were completely different. I don't come from tech. I don't come from a tech background originally. And so this this world is new to me. And I'm still learning so much about games and that whole ecosystem and how it works. So super interesting. Okay. So now the question there from from an, a curious person, right? You have a bachelor's in religious studies, Spanish language, and literature. Okay. So I want to drill deep to why did you choose that for college? <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's fair. I've asked myself that many times as well. And the short answer is it was interesting, which is almost everything in my life is like, because it was interesting and there was an opportunity. So back when I went to college, this is a while back, and I, I didn't see myself as a computer person. I was someone who read a lot of books, who really liked helping people, who did a lot of volunteering. And so when I went to college, I had lots of opportunities to like tutor, teach, translate, help people out. And it was just really easy to keep digging into those things and learn more. And it was like, this is, this is fascinating. Like I, you know, who knew that you've got post-colonialist Spanish literature where people who were conquered then spoke back to the powers that were. And so I just, I feel like I've always enjoyed school as just a chance to go dig into whatever's out there and learn more about it. And I happened to end up with you know, Spanish literature, religious studies, and I, I was this short of a classics minor because sure, why not? And I I really, college was, it wasn't my first experience with tech, but it was the first time I had like, I can get on the internet whenever, I can email people whenever, still weren't really smartphones or touch screens, but just there was more tech there and it was challenging in a lot of ways. And so I used to trade my computer buddies help, like I'll help you write your thesis statement if you'll help me figure out what on earth is going on with Microsoft Word because I just need to print a document. So yeah, super not from a tech background, didn't see myself as a tech person, didn't think it was for me, even though I was good at math and science and those sorts of things, but that's just not yeah. not where I was headed at the time. I love it. I love that because at that point you were just a user, right? Like I, I like you never thought about like, hmm, how does this word spell check thing work? <laughs> right? And, yeah, and no. I have a similar experience where so I ended up measuring in electrical computer engineering, but you know, I grew up in Rwanda and when I came to the States, I wanted to be a doctor. I wanted to be a brain surgeon. I was good at biology, chemistry, physics, you name it. And, you know, I was lucky. I got a full last scholarship from the president of Rwanda to go to the States. But then the college that that scholarship was for was an arts college at the time. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they had a pre-med you know, program. And I learned really fast how long it was going to take me to be a doctor. And I'm like, I only have four years paid for. <laughs> I'm not going to give up the other money, right? And then so I had to switch. What can I fit into these four years? And then I remember just, you know, talking to different deans and whatnot. And there was electrical computer engineering. And when I heard computer, I went back to the memory of me, my dad, and my sister going to to a internet cafe back home in Rwanda to write to my aunt an email. And then she had replied and, you know, my cousin sent pictures and I, it blew my mind. 
it, and then I just knew that I was using a computer. So when they say, you know, electrical computer engineer, I'm like, are these the people that make the email? <laughs> you know? Oh my gosh, I love it. You know? And then I was like, okay, I want to learn how that works. <laughs> and, you know, they told me that I was going to figure it out, but I never learned it in college. But, you know, that was the hook. And mm-hmm. so I can totally understand how, you know, going through college, you're using computers and you're, you know, you're exposed to tech, but you're not looking at it from making anything, right? You're just using it because that's life, right? Mm-hmm. And then so, so when you were tutoring and stuff, I think that's probably, is that where you got the interest to go into teaching and Colorado State and all that? Or? Yeah, so my LinkedIn skips a little bit, which is mm. fine. We all take things off. But basically, I, I had a lot of experience working with people, teaching, substitute teaching. And it's it's something where, you know, those interests kind of align. So I actually ended up between the the gap that you don't see on LinkedIn is I had the opportunity to travel a lot internationally and filled a lot of roles throughout that. Again, just wanting to help people. But a lot of things I ended up doing were around teaching, connecting people, helping out with communication, helped people out with their, you know, WordPress, Blogspot, Weebly websites, like just, just a lot of how to help people, how to connect people. And then moved back to the States in 2012. And I went back to school because that's what I do. School is my safe space. Mm-hmm, <laughs> and mm-hmm. I figured I had, I had had so many opportunities by that point to teach English classes, officially, unofficially, on the side, whatever. And I was like, I should just go get the degree. Then I can actually have a, a real job, 40 hours a week in the States and you know help people out and teach english so I, I went back to school mfa in creative writing that time so again just super fascinating and i love writing programs because every word on the page if it doesn't count it needs to go away and so really enjoyed it a lot learned a lot then out of that my husband and i moved to seattle and i I did get a teaching job uh, teaching English as a second language or English for speakers of other languages to adult learners here in Seattle. So yeah, that was kind of, it, it was born out of just wanting to help people, wanting to connect people and something that I had happened to get a lot of experience in over time. I love it. That's interesting. So, like I'm connecting a bunch of dots right now as you're speaking. <laughs> Like I can see, I mean, I'll let you talk about it, but I, you just gave me a nugget, you know, like I, I didn't see that that masters of fine arts and creative writing. In hindsight, you know, that passion for writing and getting the, the right words on the page or whatever, how that can translate into what you're doing now. So you moved to Seattle, you and your husband, you got a job teaching ESL, English as a second language, right? And when does the, what well, flips, you know? Because I, I, <laughs> you know, because, you know, you yeah. moved to Seattle, what happened? They're in Seattle. I should mention also, we moved to Seattle for my husband's grad school. So we were down to a grad school plus teacher salary. I immediately got pregnant. So I was like, mm-hmm. okay, at least I have a job. <laughs> this is good absolutely loved the the classes I was teaching and the people I was working with. And I was working for Goodwill, which in Seattle, Goodwill is all about jobs change lives. So when you're teaching English, it's not just, you know, learning your fruits and your vegetables and matching things. It's how are you going to use this to go get a job? So I was teaching these ESOL classes, had a baby, was still teaching classes. And we had a situation where we ran into some staffing problems. We were short one instructor. And so my boss asked me if I could fill in teaching computer basics and Excel classes also to adult learners. And I was like, okay, computer basics, no problem. Like I've struggled many years with Microsoft Word. We're friends now. It's good. But okay, Excel, I don't know. Like, And she was like, you're a teacher. Teachers just learn things two weeks ahead of everybody else. And then if you had a hard time, guess what? It's going to be relatable. You'll be fine. So 
I was like, sure, why not? I have a job. So I started learning Excel two weeks ahead of the class. And very quickly, I was like, this product is awesome. Like, why didn't I learn this sooner in life? This is making my life so much better. And so I would stay two weeks ahead of the class and, you know, learn what we were going to learn. But then as I started learning Excel, the, the center would need help. Like, oh, we got to track bus tickets. And I'm like, guess what? You could, you could build things out in Excel. We can all share these sheets together. Or, oh, we're going to do registration a certain way. Oh, guess what? Excel has some things for that. And so I was just realizing like, hey, this is this is a super great product and I, I kind of like it. And my boss, who was similar age, similar life stage, she was like, you like computers like a lot. Have you really never thought about like doing something in that arena? And I was like, my friend, I just had a baby. I have a job. <laughs> I'm a happy person. <laughs> Please leave me alone. And, and she dropped it, you know, but just every once in a while, I was like, have you really never thought of this? And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm tired. I haven't slept. And then one day she and I went to this diversity and hiring event. So we, most of the student population that we were working with are immigrants in the Seattle area. And we just wanted our teacher population to reflect the the people that we're working with. And, you know, I'm a white lady. I speak a lot of languages, but it's not the same as seeing someone with your story. So my boss and I went to this diversity and hiring event to see like, how can we find other pools of teachers or how can we connect better? What, how can we get better at this? And unbeknownst to us, it was a Seattle area hiring event talking about diversity and hiring pipelines. Well, guess what? Most of the people on that stage were talking about diversity in tech and they had good food. It was networking, like whatever we stayed <laughs> and they started talking and the women up on the stage, one of them was from Ada Developers Academy in Seattle, which is an end-to-end -end coding bootcamp that takes women with almost no coding experience all the way through, including an internship to the end where they hopefully get a job offer. And she was up on that stage and saying, I have, I love books, I love reading, I love helping people, I love learning languages. One day I discovered Excel, who knew? <laughs> Exactly. Oh, also my, my MySpace page was really awesome back in the day. And I'm like, same, same, it's me. And my boss is sitting next to me at this event, like elbowing me really hard. And I'm like emotional watching this woman. I'm like, no one ever told me I couldn't be an engineer, but I really thought it was too late for me. I, I need my job. I have a kid. I, I already have gone down this whole path. I don't think that this is going to be an open door for me at this point. And here's this woman on this stage telling her story. And I was like, I, I would 100%, like I wanna go take her to coffee right now and ask her things. And I've never been interested in this before as like the people who make the tech. But as she was talking and she's like, I help people with their drag and drop websites, check. I love Excel, check. And like everything that she said, I was just like, I feel like I am her, but in some kind of alternate universe. And yeah, so that was where the interest sparked. And my boss, being a kind person, <laughs> managed to figure out like, hey, do you want to allot some training time for yourself to, you know, explore this at all? Get a little bit of that from the company. And I was like, I, I think I should, yes. <laughs> so I followed up, looked into Ada Developers Academy, their application process, like, love it, it's amazing, because they basically try to emulate what is it like to be a software developer using tools that you are more likely familiar with, like Excel or other things. So by doing the application, you have a pretty good idea of would I enjoy this or not. And in doing the application, the turning point for me was they had data that was, I believe it was availability of like, food markets. Like if you wanted to buy a certain kind of food from a farmer's market, there was all this data of all these farmer's markets. And then they were asking questions like, okay, how would you know if you lived in this area, what would be available to you? And I was like, you could do this in Excel. <laughs> My favorite, favorite go-to phrase at that point. But I was just like, you can answer interesting questions. And then I went to my husband who has a degree in computer science. And I was like, you've been keeping very nicely quiet so far. 
but I'm doing this and it's taking me hours because I'm like plotting things and figuring out the right Excel. And like, you could probably just go like write a script or whatever, go do this. And he was like, yes, but you're enjoying it and I don't want to ruin it. So just, just keep going, just go. So yeah, so that was kind of the the turning point and the open door. And uh, yeah, I'll I'll stop there to make sure that's oh my God. on the right track. Nah, we're in a perfect track. And and I didn't know that. I didn't, like all I knew was we moved to Seattle and I started thinking about shifting my career. That's insane. And I think the most nuts thing about this is your husband is a computer scientist. Mm-hmm. Oh, and it gets better. <laughs> okay, go on, talk to me. My yes. husband is a computer scientist who was working as a web developer previously, like has the degree, had a master's, was working as a web developer and was like, it's fine. It's, it's fine. It's okay. It's a job, whatever. But I just miss that aha moment. Like, you know, when you teach someone something and it was like, you need to go back to school. And so like, you know, I'm of course the person who's like, you know, come on, let's go get a PhD. You're good at this. And he, in the meantime, is like, I really think a lot of what I do, you would enjoy. So he traded me. We went on date nights and he's like, I just want you to try programming. I really think you'd like it if you would try it. And I was like, fine, you're going to try swing dancing. And so <laughs> we went swing dancing. It was awesome. He's gotten way better at it since then. But like, he was like, okay, I'll try a new thing. He took me out to a cafe and he did not know where to start with, like, where do you dive into this? And I think he ended up explaining how pathfinding algorithms work. Like if you're on Google Maps, you want to get from point A to point B. And I was like, I'm trying really hard here, but I, I do not care about this. I'm sorry. Like, I love you. I'm really just doing this. So you'll go swing dancing with me again. <laughs> he yeah. tried three times, three different date nights where it was like, okay, I'll go dancing with you again. If you'll just let me try one more time. And every time it failed so hard and, and I love him so much. And he is in fact, a computer science lecturer. Now he's gotten so much better at like, where do you jump in? But it's just so hard to learn it from someone that you love where like you already have the relationship. There's no, you don't have to impress them. And like, yeah. So when he saw me like looking into it on my own, he was just like, I don't want to ruin it. I don't, yeah. Okay. I really think you're going to like it. Like, please just just go, whatever's going to make you happy, you go learn that. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. Life, life is very interesting, right? <laughs> like, you took this random woman at a networking event where you were going to hopefully learn about how to make your pipeline that first, right? <laughs> to psych, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Oh, my God. Okay, so uh, so 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 now, so you said this woman was from the Ada Developers Ada. Academy. Ada, mm-hmm. Ada. Okay, I'd love to 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 know who she is. But so so she's talking. You're like, oh my god, are you me? Am I you? Like, what's going on? And then from there, you go look into them, right? You take their thing, and then did you did you join them? Oh, I wanted to. So I went through the application process and I got through the first two rounds. So I got all the way to the in-person interviews. And at, when you do the, when you get through the first round, they're like, hey, it takes us a while. While you're waiting, why don't you check out these links? You know, maybe go look at Learn Ruby the Hard Way. Maybe go look at Code Academy. Maybe go look at some other things like get ramped up on this if you can. It'll only help you in the process. And if you don't make it in, you'll have learned something. So I was already like, you know, up at night, of course, got, you know, the baby on one side, got some food on the other side. And I was just like, the, I can make the whole website. It's not just my like WordPress drag and drop, like I control everything. And like that, that was like the most amazing experience. So I'm like up at night doing these tutorials. And then I got through all the way to the end interview process for Ada. And I remember I was in my car, like, you know, waiting, I'm like, okay, this is the day they're going to send out the notifications. And 
I followed a bunch of Ada people online. And so I knew from their, their blogs, their videos and everything, like I knew the process and I was like, this is going to be the moment I'm going to blog about. Like, yeah, and I pulled over in my car and I was crying because I got in. So my phone buzzed and I pulled over in my car and I looked and it was like, we regret to inform you. And I was like, no, <laughs> no, no, no. This is not how this story is going to end. <laughs> and, uh, and they were like, you know, we regret to inform you, you did a great job, but no, it's, it's not gonna be at this time. We invite you to reapply. In the meantime, also check out Cal Academy, which is local to Seattle. And I was just, I was so devastated. It was like, I, I just, this was my moment. I was all ready. It's not gonna happen for me. And so I went, I went back home and I was like, I can't, I can't go back up the path that I've been going down for the, the last two months. I love this. It's amazing. I 100% think that I can do it. And so I pulled my husband in. I'm like, okay, you, you, you get to be a part of this, like boundaries. I want honest feedback. Do not tell me nice things because you love me. Do not tell me nice things because I'm, I want that answer from you. Honest evaluation from someone with the not one degree, but two degrees and going back for yet another one. I want to know, do you think I have what it takes if I didn't get into ADA, but I could put together some kind of curriculum to do this myself? Do you really think I could do it? An honest evaluation on timeline, like, you know, straight talk. And he was like, okay, one, I've always thought you were good at this. I always thought you would like it. And I really can't believe that you've just been teaching yourself for two months. Two, everybody teaches themselves. Like, even if you have the degree, there's, you're always going to be learning on your own. So like, yeah, I think it's possible. And in terms of timeline, I don't know, but I think like it, it turns out one of us figured out, I don't remember who, but like Ada actually puts their curriculum online and so we were like, let's look into it. Let's make a plan. And so we actually sat down and figured out like, okay, here's the ADA curriculum. It takes them six months and then there's this internship or seven months plus an internship. Oh, here's Coding Dojo. They're another uh, boot camp in the area. They say four months. So I went to interview with them and they were like, well, it's four months of instruction. But it was like, okay, we're talking like eight months, it sounds like from you guys. And then there was Code Fellows and other, I basically called every single boot camp in the area and they all pretty much said, you're looking at eight to 18 months. And I was like, okay, I guess I could just keep working full time and do this on the side, I don't know. And my husband was like, if you want it that bad, like if you know you're going to do this, you're a very determined person, I'm, I'm pretty sure. If you set out to do this, you're gonna find a way one way or another. What if we just look at like, you know, do this for another month or something. But if, if you just quit your job, I think we could hang on. We've got savings. I can always take out loans for grad school. What if you just did this? And I was like, oh, dang it. Like we have a, a kid. It's not just me. Like, is this really something we can do? And uh, yeah, long story short, I ended up, I waited one more month at my job and talked with my boss and I was like, I'm, I'm just going to go, I'm, I'm going to go code in my basement and figure this out. And I'm, I'm pretty sure I can get it to work. And if it doesn't, then you'll hear from me in a year. That's, <laughs> that's kind of the, the time period that we're looking at is if I can't do this within a year, then I need to have, start putting my backup plan in place. So, yeah. So I did not join Ada. But I looked at their curriculum and ran it past my husband, like, okay, obviously we've got some HTML, CSS, you know, front end web stuff. Obviously, we've got some learn a general language back end stuff. Obviously, we've got a make a whole project end to end, make a portfolio kind of stuff. Obviously, we've got some interviewing stuff. Here's, I think, how I would break that down. And Am I missing anything? I mean, it's, it, there's so much in this world. And he was like, eh, I think start there. That sounds good. And so 
yeah, I just started following recommendations and I'd go through a Code Academy thing and see what they recommended next and go do that. Go do a treehouse thing, see what they recommended next and go do that. And just went resource to resource to resource to resource to resource online. And yeah, just like tried to get the concepts. So I'll, I'll pause there for a sec. No, I love this. I love this so much because so, so far I've talked to individuals that they get a recommendation, hey, go join that bootcamp. They will do the thing, right? And they apply, they get in, boom. And, you know, happily ever after they graduate, they go look for a job. But I love how, you know, the EDA process kind of solidified your love, even though you didn't end up getting in, right? It kind of stirred that fire and it pretty much gave you confirmation that yeah, you love this. Now it's a matter of how bad you, you know, can you bet on yourself? But also I love how in, in hindsight, it paid off that you had taught. It paid off that you had, you know, curriculum wise steps, you know, you start foundation, you build on top of that, that came in handy. Right, mm -hmm. because you pretty much created your own curriculum of things that you wanted to learn, knowing what the end game is, because that's what all teaching is all about, right? Like, you look at the end goal, you're like, okay, and you reverse engineer that, mm -hmm. right? I love that, and and I also, and I'm gonna share this, you know, once we post this, it, like, all the resources that you used, you pretty much, you know, pretty much most of them you posted on, on your blog. I love how. You know, you and, and how did you feel, by the way, when, when you were learning and have to write? I, I know that you love to write. How did that come about? How did, did the blog come about? In way? Yeah, and, like, you know, to, 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 to blog about it, you know, that whole blogging, my career shift. Uh, was it for you? Was it for anybody else that was reading it? Because I know every single time I write, most of the time it's for me, but, you know, it's kind of there's an altruistic thing about it. But, mm -hmm. I, you know, Tell me more about that. Yeah, so some of it was for me. I learned from the creative writing program that when I write things down on paper, it forces me to not just skim around issues, but to be precise and say, here's what I actually mean with this word and this word. So some of it was for me, but honestly, some of it was, I really had that ADA curriculum as my model. And most of the people who go to ADA, they enc encourage them, like, keep a blog because it's going to encourage you, like, to see how you've grown. But also it becomes a networking tool because you will learn to write about tech by writing about tech. And then when people don't know who you are, and this is pretty early. At the time, there weren't a lot of boot camps in Seattle. It wasn't a really well-known thing. And so when people are like, oh, I graduated from this boot camp," or, oh, I'm, I'm self-taught, the next question was kind of, what does that mean? So I did it partly for, for those reasons and because that's what I had seen, but then also a couple months in realizing like, this whole process felt so redemptive to me as, as someone who had been around computers for a long time and who could have learned them younger. And, and just for whatever reason, that's not how it went. And it was like, I could go back and give that gift back to my younger self of like, guess what? Problem solving, super fun. Computers are just another way of problem solving. Like coding is just talking to a computer the way that speaking Spanish is talking to someone. Like you, you're just talking to something that speaks in ones and zeros and you have to figure out a way to do that. And uh, so it was sort of like this redemptive thing for me of I got to go back and, and build in those skills. So yeah, I, I, I really, I think there are more people out there who don't realize. And because some of those getting started resources, like sometimes they miss things like, oh, you don't have a Mac, you have, you know, a computer that's running Windows and you have to add things to the path. That was, oh, I cried bitter, bitter tears over that. And if if my husband had not been in the other room where I could go be like, 
you computer science people, why don't you put directions in here? Like, you know, he, he definitely heard from me a few times where I was like, if you're developing on a, on a Mac versus on a Windows machine, it's different. And I had a Windows machine and that put up some, some barriers in the learning process. And I was like, no one should have to go through this. <laughs> it should be easier. So yeah, some of the blog was for me. Some of it was to put it out there for anyone else who's kind of doing the same thing. And um, in hindsight, now that I, I'm kind of on the other side of this, it's also something where a lot of people will reach out on LinkedIn or other places and they'll ask like, okay, well, I'm, I have a background in biology and I want to learn to code, but it's super different. And I'm like, I have a creative writing degree. <laughs> if I can do it, you can do it. Like, please just, just try. And so then I'll, I'll send them pieces depending on, on what's going on. I love it. And I don't know if you see it, the irony of this. Like you're that, that lady on the stage from Ada but you just have a different stage even than me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, mean, I love I hope it. So. I love it. I love it. No, I mean, that's how I literally I found you because, you know, with, with, with this whole mission that I'm on, I was like, okay, I need to find people that really embody this, this shift, right? And I'm like, okay, like, where do I find them? And I just started Googling. And then when I Googled some stuff, I know your blog came up and I started reading. <laughs> you know, I started reading and then boom, like, you know, here we are, you know. Thanks. And I, have a, I love how, because, you know, every single person that I've talked to, my question to them ended up being, okay, well, I mean, you know, hindsight, everything that you know, you, 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 you know, you were privileged, you, you, you had the money to save up to pay for this boot camp. Mm -hmm. well, what if, you know, what do you tell somebody that don't? Mm -hmm. And I found you, you know what I mean? So in your journey, apart from, from the, you know, of course, like when you look at, when they tell you to add something to the path, you know, what the hell is the path and how do I do that, right? Like mm -hmm. that can look like the end of the road for you. Mm -hmm. But as you were self teaching this new skill, these new skills that you didn't really have innate into you. Mm -hmm. What are some of the hurdles, like big ones that you had to overcome and how did you do that? Yeah, that's a great question. And something that weighs on me and why I keep the blog up. <laughs> so there are, there's like the beginner hurdles of, I can't get my computer set up in a way to try this out, right? Or like, I remember trying out one of the Ruby sites, let's try Ruby, and they gave a couple commands and like, I tried out something I thought would work and it didn't work because the environment was only set up to do the things that were in the trial program. Like, so that, that getting set up piece is so frustrating and it can be so hard. And if you don't have a buddy to like, go show you like, oh, you didn't understand that you have to read the file that's in this location. Oh, you didn't understand that you have to add a thing to the path to be able to use it in PowerShell. Oh, you didn't even know how to get to PowerShell on, on your computer. Like those kinds of things, those are hard. But also if you can get over like, you know, like being ashamed of I'm trying to learn a thing and I don't want to look dumb. If you could find a buddy, those are also pretty easy to problem solve. And I, I watch my husband do that with his classes a lot. I help new developers on my team. And it's like, oh yeah, this is, we didn't, we didn't write it down last time. We should write it down this time. But like that, that initial barrier is rough. But then also people are very thoughtful about beginner lessons. So they're like, okay, so a string, it just means like, these are, you know, your words in a sentence, like think about your sentence in quotation marks, that's your string. You've got characters, those are pieces of your string. And you've got ints, that's just a number. Don't worry about it, it's a number. And you know, they show you how to do math and like all these beginner tutorials, they really, most of them do a great job of like hand holding through that process. Like here's an int, your int is two. What if you save your int in a variable? What if you want to have, you know, add up multiple variables? And I'm, I'm not explaining this great because so many people already explain this so well. So all those beginner tutorials are super great. 
where I really got stuck was like, Google was my best friend in this process. I learned really fast watching my husband being frustrated with like, I don't know, you have a Windows machine. I don't know how to do this either, but I would watch and he would just Google it. And I'm like, well, I can Google things. <laughs> I get really impatient sometimes. I'm like, I could Google that. You're not doing anything I can't do. And so then I'd go grab like another computer and like, we're both Googling this problem. And then we'd run into an error message. And he'd be like, let me go Google that. And I'm like, is it your whole job to Google things? <laughs> like, I'm so good at Google. I lived internationally where no one spoke my language and I had to just solve things for myself. Like, I know how to Google. And like, and he was just laughing at your reaction too. Like, cause it's like, that really is like a very high percentage of my job as a software developer. It's like just Googling error messages and being like, okay, we got past the first hurdle, time for the next hurdle. Uh, so we would Google problems, whatever. Where I really got stuck was, okay, past like, can I get stuff to run? Do I understand the basics of like variables and, you know, strings versus ints, whatever. But then I saw like at the other end is I've built a project, the project works. And every time I would go and try to do a project, it was like some, it, it just, the pieces weren't all there in the right order or like the front end part would be really good and then the documentation had gone out of date. And if you tried to follow their directions, the back end would not work. I tried another one, the back end totally worked, but the front end was gone. Or the video is out of date, the button you're supposed to click doesn't live there anymore. Someone did a redesign. And I was like, I, I want to scream. As someone who has a background in how to put together a good classroom experience for students. The idea that it's like totally cool to just leave your documentation out there in whatever state it was. And I'm like, that's a terrible user experience. So like that, that thing of like getting from, I can do pieces of this to how do you put the whole thing together? And like, I should probably pause and say, as a software developer who is overly busy and works too hard sometimes, I understand the other side of like, it is hard to keep everything up to date, especially when it's like something you're doing out of the goodness of your heart. Okay, cool. So that's actually the point at which I found Cal Academy, a Seattle. And Cal is a software engineer from Microsoft who gives back to the community in her spare time. And so she just pretty much started a nonprofit. And when I went there, it was literally, she had set up her garage with, it wasn't even, yeah, it wasn't even a whiteboard. It was just her computer projected on the garage wall. There was no bathroom. You had to hold it. One time I really had to use the bathroom. She let me go in her house. <laughs> we had chairs. <laughs> like it was the most low budget help people out thing. But, it, and I saw that she had full stack web development course. And so, you know, I called her on the phone and, and she's like, well, what experience do you have? And I just started listing like, okay, well, at this point I've looked at Ruby. I've looked at C Sharp. I've looked at Java. I've looked at CSS HTML. I've looked at, the, and she's just like, you're weird. Like she didn't say you're weird, but there was just this pause of like, why are you here? And I'm like, I don't know how to put it together. I, I need help. Like someone needs to help me get over this hump of like, I can't put it together. And she was like, cool, show up on Saturday. So <laughs> went to this room and, and she has, she, since then she's upgraded. But at the time, you know, there we were in her garage and she just like first step, she's like, okay, here we are in Visual Studio. You're going to press this button. When you press this button, oh, look, there's a website end to end. Here's how you run it. Okay, let's make a change on the front end. Okay, run it. Look, it looks different. Oh, here's a change on the back end. Okay, run it. It looks different. And I was just like, like, yes. <laughs> That's all I needed. Like, just give me the start of how this works. And obviously I got a whole lot more from her as well. But that middle step of when you have pieces, how do the pieces fit together? What do you do with those pieces? I really, that's something that if I had to teach myself entirely online, it would have been a lot of tears and a lot of pain and just really hard. And I feel like that's that place where it helps to have someone like holding your hand to get you through that stage of like, 
how do you put it together? And why does it matter? Why does anybody care? Who? Why does it matter that someone needs to sign into your website? Like, it's a lot of hassle. Why do you need to do that? <laughs> so yeah, so that, that was a piece where I really needed another person. And then also at the end, I took an interviewing class from her as well. And oh, technical interviewing. Like it is, it is its own special squirrel on the best of days. It, it's just hard and understanding the framework of what is the engineer on the other side of the table trying to get out of me in this interview and why? What do they want to know about me? What will convince them to say yes? I feel like there are plenty of websites that talk about that. There, you know, and then there's like leak code and code wars and all kinds of things where you can practice. But having a person explain it when they had been the hiring manager many times, like I needed that. <laughs> that was really helpful. So I think for me, it's kind of those three barriers, like the very, very getting started, the middle part, putting the pieces together, and then the end of like, how are you actually going to get hired? And how do you approach technical interview problems? Like those were all, th those are high barrier areas. And, and for me, I felt really lucky to have kind of found people each of those stages to help me through. I love it. I love, I love that a lot. Like as we were talking right now, I'm like, okay, somebody needs to go set up some YouTube channel about how to set up different environments. Somebody <laughs> need to do that. You know, somebody to put together like, okay, how does all, you know, fit, you know, mixing. So I don't know, just put it all together, middle ground. You know, I don't know. I don't know. But that, I mean, I know exactly what you mean. I know exactly what, and then, and then that final piece of the interview, it, like you said, it's its own beast, right? Because you get what, like an hour, two hours, I don't know how long you're with somebody, then you got to determine whether this person can contribute to your team. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in your team, you're working on so many things. But within this hour, with one or three problems, you want to make a decision whether this person will be a good fit for your team, mm -hmm. right? And, and then as somebody that you're trying to even break into an industry that you don't even know the other side, <laughs> you know? Like, like, do I just got to know, memorize these questions and then answer or, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Totally. That's crazy. That's crazy. And I think it's a great thing that I'm going to ask you too, because now you've been in, in Kamal's shoes. You've had to hire people, you, you know, all of her stuff. So like, I can't wait to, to get your perspective on that. And before I jump in there, it's, it's interesting, right? Like other people, they pay somebody, somebody, you know, you can't whatever, they put them through this and there's this internship that's kind of like guaranteed in a way. Some, some they're like, okay, we'll help you with career search, blah, 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 hook you up with some networks, blah, blah, go find you a job. You didn't have that. So one gift, how'd you go about it? So, oh man. So a few things, one was, Cal kind of laid out for us, you know, basically to get hired in tech, you need a portfolio, you need to be able to pass a technical interview. You can complain all you want that these are not requirements that you're a fan of, but that's what you need. And the sooner that you just push through your discomfort, your fear, your anger, whatever it is you're feeling, and you go do those two things, the sooner you're going to get the job. And for technical interviews, this is a learned skill. You can practice, you should practice, you can get better. Nobody's good at technical interviews, that's the point. And so she literally, she made us, she, she'd be like, you can pick your own problem, I don't care, go on leak code, here's my list, like pick whatever problem you want, time yourself for 45 minutes, put a camera on yourself, get a whiteboard or a piece of paper and code through your problem and talk through the logic as you go and then, go get a drink, go get a snack, come back and watch yourself and be critical. What did you see? Would you hire that person? Why would you hire that person? Why wouldn't you hire that person? And we talked about it and she was like, I'm going to tell you two things. One, a lot of people don't expect you to solve the problem. They just want to see how your mind works and they want to see that you're not going to give up. So when you go to that whiteboard to solve that problem, if you go there and you're like, silent. 
how does that interviewer know what's going on in your head? Like the point of this is to get at what's in your head. And it's like, oh, okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Like we can relate to this, you know, teaching and like putting things on a whiteboard. Cool. And she's like, and two is they're, they're supposed to give you something that you can't solve because they want to see how you approach something that you don't know because that's software engineering. So if you go to that whiteboard and you're like, Oh, I've never seen this. Oh, I'm kind of bad at this. Oh, I don't know. I'm, I'm new to the industry. Like, I'm so sorry. I don't have a CS degree. Like, are you going to feel confident in that person? Probably not. And so she was just like, you got to practice and then be hard on yourself. Like watch that video and see, did I talk out loud? And did I speak with confidence or did I talk myself down? On the other side of that interaction, I now volunteer with her and I do mock interviews for, you know, junior level people trying to break into the industry. And um, I lead a team of developers as well. And I'm just like, yeah, hundred percent. I, if, if you have memorized this problem, I don't want to watch you solve this problem. It's not interesting for either of us. I want to see what happens when you get flustered or when you're completely stuck or when I would use Google, but I'm not allowed to because the constraints of this interview, like I, I totally agree. Like, I want to see how you think and I want to see that you're not going to give up. And a lot of times when I coach people and do mock interviews, especially with women, it's always the top of my sheet. Like, hey, don't talk yourself down. Guess what? You actually solved the problem. You solved it in the allotted time. But do you know what you said while you were solving the problem? You told me, I don't have a CS background. I don't know if I can do this. Oh, I've never seen this before. And you had this very worried face when you said it. Like, how does that sound to you? Do you want to hire that person? And like, usually what I hear back is like, I didn't even realize I was saying that. I was just nervous. Yeah, on my team currently, we have people with a lot of different backgrounds. And I will say like everybody brings a different strength. People who come with a CS background have a set of strengths. People who come self-taught have a set of strengths. People who come from boot camp have a set of strengths. And when you put them all together in a room and they're all working on things together, it's magic because each of those people has something that nobody else has, but they have to have that confidence to lean into whatever that strength is. Like, you know, I'm not the person who can tell you how your compiler works, but by golly, if you want a website up and running end to end that does a thing fast, that's me. I'm, I'm that person, but I have other friends who can tell you how the compiler works. And when we run into problems that are deeply technical, it would be absolutely ridiculous to not go and get that person's expertise. Right. So anyway, that's maybe a little sidetrack, but I just, no, I love that. I yeah. That so that, that was the interviews and I, I could go back to the other pieces of like networking, but I just feel like technical interviews are, are such a beast and, yeah, I wanted to go back. And, then, and now I love how you can't shortcut it. Just like you can't, you know, you can't shortcut the knowledge, right? Like you can just watch YouTube videos and go and interview, talk about how you know it, right? <laughs> it's just like, you know, you know what I mean? And, 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 and just like we spent time acquiring this knowledge, I, I, the thing that you said that's, that's amazing is like you just got to accept the nature of the beast, right? Like, you, you got to sit through an interview. You got to prove that, that, you know, somebody can put you in their team and they will trust you in figuring it out, right? And just like everything else that you did until now, you have to kind of practice this skill. And I've never heard that whole record yourself. Like, as you were talking about, I'm like, oh my God, that's it. That's it. I think you guys should do it. Like, I don't know if you, you're thinking about doing this mock interviews, remote and stuff but i know a lot of people would benefit from that a whole lot because again something that scares a lot of people and for some reason we want a shortcut you know how do i get a, you know taking interviews without really doing the work without putting in that time right mm -hmm. so that's that's amazing and then you also mentioned too you know the portfolio talk to me about that yeah so while I was taking classes from Cal and she mentioned we needed a portfolio and we'd have one project from her. And I was like, okay, well, I quit my job to do this full time and I'm spending some amount on your class, but I'm going to do 40 hours a week of some kind of software development. So I went and found free code camp. Love them. They're amazing. Yay. Yeah. And I was like, 
I, I like checking things off boxes and they have their curriculum of like, here's how to learn it. But if you do these projects, we'll give you a certificate. And I was like, I'm done. I'm done. Like, I'm going to get all the certificates. So I just started jumping in because I had already done lessons elsewhere. And I was like, I don't want to do the review lessons. I want to just go learn by building things. So I just went through started with the front end projects, went to the D3 data visualization projects, went down to the back end projects, started on the full stack projects. And their whole thing is like, you won't get through this before you get a job. And I was like, we'll see free code camp. <laughs> I will put this to the test. So I just started building things. And then, you know, you learn a lot about how to make it have work for you in that as well. So I made a little like front end code pen, here are links to all the stuff that I made, deal, put that on my resume, and then, you know, tried to redo my resume, uh, probably like at least 20 tries of like, what's the right balance of, it's got to get down to one sheet, I want to highlight the projects without being like, too pedantic about it, and mostly I have to drop all of my previous experience off, unless it relates, which was like, just gut-wrenching. So yeah, I ended up having like my main portfolio. Here are all the links. Here's some pretty preview pictures of all those links. And of course, now I look back, I look at that code and I'm like, that's no, I would not, I would not make any of the same choices <laughs> for so many reasons. And part of it is just like what I was learning. I think I learned D3, V3, Angular 1, this will tell you exactly when I learned to code, right? By like what tools it was. By the time I'd been on the job for six months, every tool I had learned was out of date. So one, would have had to upgrade everything anyway, but then also like being on the job and seeing like, oh, object-oriented programming across a large thing makes a difference as opposed to, here's my one little example page, who cares? Like, why am I gonna over-engineer this? And so I just look back now and I'm like, There's, they could be so much better. But like, that's not the point, right? The point isn't to make the best website that's going to endure for all time. The point is to make enough stuff to show that you can learn, that you can make something, that you can fulfill a spec that the customer wanted. So a lot of it is still out there in the world and the code is still on GitHub. And I'm just like, oh, please no one judge me by this now. <laughs> Yeah, like I'm not associated yeah. with this in any shape or form. We on my yeah. own. <laughs> yeah, like that was prior me. That was, uh, that was prior me. Trust me, I can do better. Yeah, that is crazy. And okay, so so you go to Cov, tells you about the two rules of getting a job: portfolio and you, you get good at this, right? Like you build the portfolio, you go to Code Pen, you go through Free Code Camp, which is amazing, by the way. It's literally hands down one of my favorite things so you build the projects you interview you record yourself you get good at this so when you go knocking and how many doors you knock on and how does that go oh man so i also like many people on the side i would reach out on linkedin or via email or whatever or people i met in class and i'd be like how do you actually make this transition? How, how do you do this for real? And pretty much everybody said like, you can dump your resume in a bunch of piles, no one's stopping you, but the best way is to network, figure out how to network. And I was like, I live in Seattle, there's gotta be something for this. And so I went on Ada's site first, cause they're the end to end bootcamp with the built-in internships. And I marked every single company that had partnered with Ada because I was like, these people know what a bootcamp is. They, they are open to non-traditional hires. So I wanna pay attention to those. And then I started, I don't wanna say stalking, but like I looked up a lot of their engineers and recruiters on LinkedIn and just, just wanna know, like heard that you have this great company. How is it working there? That did not go great for me. So then I looked up like, okay, I'm not getting responses. And everyone's like, you can talk to people on LinkedIn. And I'm like, apparently you can, but no one's talking back. And there are all these, <laughs> there are all these great resources out there. People blog about, here's how to do a good LinkedIn outreach. Like you don't, you don't say like, Hey, or Hey, you're a software engineer or whatever. Like, you know, you say who you are, what you're trying to accomplish, what you would like from that person. Thank you very much for your time. 
and you do targeted outreach of like, who are the people in your network that can be that stepping stone for you? And you send a whole bunch at once. And so anyway, so I started looking into how to reach out to people on LinkedIn in a better way than I had been, <laughs> in a more targeted way. And also started getting myself invited to events. And I was like, I hate I, I hate networking. Like I, I truly passionately hate networking. I feel so awkward. I don't enjoy it. I'm an introvert at heart. I want to sit at home with my hot chocolate and my book, but everybody was like, no, you have to do this. So like there was a, some kind of conference. I want, it was a women in coding conference. I forget which one It was going to be in Seattle. It cost a lot of money to go to the whole thing. So I just paid to go to the career fair. I was like, okay, I'm going to go network at the career fair. And people are like, isn't this a lovely conference? I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. So did you go last year? Like, I'm not going to tell them I'm not at the conference. Like I've been, I've been doing software development for six months. Like I'm, I don't know anything like, and, oh, it was, it was just excruciating. And I like learned by utterly failing. I walked up to some recruiters for Snapchat. I didn't know who they were. I didn't know what their company was. And I was just like, cool cupcakes, you know, like fail, just terrible fails talking to recruiters. But every time I watched, like I'd go up, I'd try, try whatever intro it was. I'd watch their face and I'm like, that did not go well. And then I'd sit there and I'd watch somebody else come up and be like, oh, there's, there are rules to how this works. Like, you don't walk up and say cool cupcakes, or, cool logo. <laughs> you walk up and say like, hey, I'm really interested in, in backend technology. I prefer C Sharp. Do you have anything in, in that space? And I was like, oh, space. Okay, got to learn this. So like, I just sat and like listened to people at this career fair for hours. I dragged my friend with me. She's there too. And she's doing the same thing I'm doing, just utterly failing at talking to everyone. And so we're like, you know, I got my free t-shirt, but I'm embarrassed. Got another free t-shirt, still embarrassed. And we, we watched how everybody talked. Out of that event, after watching successful people approaching recruiters and the recruiter would be like, oh yeah, put down your information. Oh, here's my card. Oh, put your card here. Or just put down your information because a lot of people didn't have cards. I was like, okay, I gotta, I, I'm gonna revamp this pitch. Like, Hey, I'm Kristen. I'm switching careers. I'm self-taught. I'm really passionate about full stack web development and just want to see like what's new in that space in your company. And all of a sudden people are like, oh, that's so great, Kristen. Write down your information. Like, what's your specialty? And I'm like, oh, I do it all. Which is <laughs> like the audacity, right? Like I'm looking back now and I'm like, who is that person? Like, but it worked. And all of a sudden I started getting these emails from people and they're like, oh, hey, Amazon, we're having this networking event with hors d'oeuvres, bring your resume. We'll tell you what's wrong with it. So you can apply for jobs. And I'm like, done. I'm there, Amazon. Thank you. And <laughs> like Microsoft Leap, which I'd also heard about through Cal. They're like, we take non-traditional background. I'm like, yes, I'm going to go talk to you. And so then I started getting myself invited to these events and the Amazon one, it was amazing. Like they basically bring recruiters to their events and they will redline your resume for you and be like, this is bad. This is bad. What even is this? make this stronger, but their goal is they want that resume in the pile. So they give you good feedback, but then you're also like, you know, you're eating your hors d'oeuvres with your resume kind of in your bag on the side and like trying to talk to people and like, what does they want to talk about? They're going to talk about tech. And I'm like, I sat in my basement and I built a website. Like that's not okay. Nope. Got to, got to think of a better way to talk about this. So yeah, so I would go to really awkward recruiting events. I also started going to hackathons. I love hackathons. They are just a giant, like, there's so much potential for good. And there's also so much potential for a giant mess. Everybody comes in with good intentions, but with like completely different skills. Yeah, exactly. And so like, I started going to hackathons and I realized that if you go to a hackathon and you only sit there and you're like, I know D3, do you need a chart? I will make it in D3. Like that is not gonna be a fun hackathon for anybody. You just have to jump in and be like, what are we trying to build? All right, trying to build a full stack site with some visualizations that calls a database. Who knows about databases? You, awesome. What can you do with the database? Oh, we need to do some front end stuff. Who knows front end? You, awesome. And like putting those pieces together and then you learn. And 
so hackathons I felt more comfortable with than the networking events. And every hackathon would end with at least one person being like, oh, by the way, I work at Redfin. Oh, by the way, I work at Hulu. If anybody ever wants a job. And so I'm like, trade, 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 yay information. So yeah, started networking a ton, which I hate, but I got better at it because it's a learned skill. <laughs> and through, through Cal, she had said like, oh, Microsoft, they have this program that they're trying out for mostly for bootcamp grads and return, like returners, people who left tech to go have a kid and stay at home for a few years and they want to come back. And she was like, most of the people in my interviewing class, they're aiming for Leap. They want to get into Leap. And I'm like, I want to get into Leap. Where do I apply? <laughs> so, so I actually, like, I had only been taking her class for a month and Leap applications opened. And I was like, do you think I'm ready? She's like, do you think you're ready? Like, who cares? Put your name down. I was like, okay, so I put my name down. Every other person, I had, I had only been doing this for like three months at the time. And it was way too early, but every other person got at least an interview. And then it was just like crickets. Like I got nothing. So the second time the application portal opened, I was like, no, I've, this time I've got it. Like I have portfolios. I can do interview questions. I, I know how to talk to people about technical things and not sound totally out of the box. And and uh, yeah, I got, inter I got an interview, which I was just like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, it's happening. I really got an interview. And uh, Cal, of course, very encouraging. With, like, she's just like, you guys are going to kill it. Just go. Don't cry. Answer the question. Talk out loud. Don't talk yourself down. Like very straightforward. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go do that. I would love to say like, and I was awesome. So I got in. I, I would love to say that. But also, but it's always both, right? Like I got lucky and I also did well. So I happened to get two interview questions that were right in my wheelhouse. And it was a little early. Like I probably could have gone the next round instead of that round, but I happened to get two questions that were completely in my wheelhouse, talked through them out loud. And I thought I failed because the interviewer, like I solved the problems, so they gave me a harder problem. I solved the problems, so they gave me a harder problem. And I came home and I cried and I was like, I can't believe I, I lost this opportunity. Like I, I did the best I could and the interviewer just kept giving me harder stuff. And I, I, I lost it. Like I, I couldn't solve the last problem. And my husband was like, how many problems did you solve? It was like, well, the one interview, it was three, and the other one, like, I don't know, it was a lot. And he's like, you only have to solve one problem. <laughs> if you solve one problem, everything past that is just to see, like, your level. It's not to say yes or no. And I was like, well, that would have been good to know maybe ahead of time. <laughs> and so then I'm just, like, sitting there, like, biting my nails for days because, you know, think, thinking back to Ada, like, I'm going to wait for this phone call. It's not going to be it. And I got in. And I, I cried. I was like, oh my gosh, like <laughs> I get to go like have an apprenticeship at Microsoft, which makes Word and Excel <laughs> my favorite, favorite things. I get to go work at Microsoft. Fun. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And then the people in my cohort, there was like a whole group of us that were like, oh, you got into this from Excel too? <laughs> like that was, that was a whole subset of our cohort. So yeah, so I, I got super lucky. I didn't have to run the interview gauntlet because I got in at Leap and then I got an offer at the end of my apprenticeship, but I was out networking the whole time and like, I was ready. Like if this falls through, I know I have these interviews lined up that I can go to, but it's, it. it's rough. <laughs> so anyway, yay Leap. I love it. I have so many questions. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess, you know, I'm, I'm trying to prioritize. Like first, I want to, I want you to introduce me to whoever, you know, like somebody at Ada. I want to meet Ka. I want to talk to somebody from Leap mm -hmm. because I don't think a whole lot of people know about that program. I just, I found out about it from your, your blog, but I think, one thing that I would love for you to share, if you can, you're, you're an engineer manager, right? So you've hired a bunch of people. You, you know, you were a software engineer lead. 
there's so many, you know, of course there's, there's the portfolio, there's interviewing, there's networking. But when, when you're hiring, what are you, what are you looking for that's intangible? Like that you're hoping that the candidate brings. Mm-hmm. So I will say like, it's a big company. So I have very little say in this and just want to preface it with that. But sometimes we have internal transfers as well. So someone who'd be successful on my team, really what I want to see is grit. Just, are you going to stick with this? And are you going to stick with it in a way that's productive? So like, do you understand how you solve problems? Do you understand how to break down a problem into small pieces? And then are you going to go solve every single one of those pieces one way or another until it's done? Those are, those are the people that I just love to see. And like when I find someone who's like, they can tell me how they break down problems into smaller pieces and how they absolutely see them through to the end. I'm just like, okay, if I can't have you, like, I want to connect you with someone. I, you will go far in this industry. So that it. that's my favorite. I love it. Two more questions. So I was listening to some of Linda Gates' moment of lift. Mm-hmm. And she talks about her career in Microsoft. She talks about her career in tech. And as an industry, I think we, we can do better, you know, with inclusivity and, and gender equity and all that. And I think you're probably lucky to work at Microsoft just because, I mean, from a company, a company perspective, I think it's one of those tech companies that, at least from what I hear, I mean, I've never worked there. They're, they they do really well when it comes to like, at least generally from, from what I hear. But if you take a pulse on the industry, like what do you, I guess, have you, have you ever experienced that kind of weird shoulder, people not trusting that you know what you're talking about, even though, you know, you're a lead or whatever, having to work more than the next guy or having to overcompensate for something that nobody else is doing. And yeah. how do you navigate that? Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's, a whole, that's a whole side trail to go down for sure. I, I do love a lot of stuff that Microsoft is doing in that space, I think is really great. It's also really common to, to run into that experience as someone with a non-traditional background, as a woman, as anyone from an underrepresented group. They're not uncommon stories. I, I can think of there was a conference that some colleagues and I were, were going to where we were presenting and there was kind of the lead engineer was presenting and two of us were there to help with questions. And like when we went afterward to go mingle, the three of us were standing together and, uh, you know, everybody came up and like shook the hand of the first guy. Nice talk. Shook the hand of the next guy. Oh, yes. Lovely to see you here. Then they just kind of looked at me like, hmm. I was like, I'm also on the team. Oh, oh, yes, lovely to meet you too, (laughs) right? Or like chatting with people. I still go to all these networking events because it's useful, you know, chatting with people at networking events and definitely gotten before things like, oh, so you're a non-traditional background. Like, well, yeah, but so were a lot of people. Like there haven't been CS degrees for the, the entire history of computers as it were. And, and then they'll kind of like credential check, like, but do you understand how to reverse the linked list? Or did you just like do some front end stuff? And I'm like, that's the whole mood. Like I, I have opinions about people who refer to front end as front end stuff. That's usually not, not a great thing in my book. And there are excellent engineers who do a whole lot of great work on the front end, as well as on the back end, as well as everywhere else. So I don't want to pretend like I don't run into that. It, it happens. And it, it also gets compounded by like imposter syndrome, right? Like when you're breaking into an industry that you don't know and you feel like an outsider, then every time you run into that, it's like, maybe they are going to figure that out. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh gosh, maybe I really don't belong. 
And so, I mean, like to this day, like I remember, like I got the apprenticeship at Microsoft and like, I got to kill it because I need a job. Like they're going to figure out, I don't actually know how to do this. Oh my gosh. And then like, I got the job and I was like, okay, well I got to impress them because otherwise they're going to figure out that I don't belong here. And like, here we are four and a half years down the road. And I still come in some Mondays and I'm like, they're going to figure out, this is the week. This is going to be the week that, that they really figure it out that I don't belong here. And like, I have to like talk myself up every morning that it's like, no, I do belong here. I have been doing stuff. I am doing good work, but like that imposter syndrome is real. And I think sometimes people don't realize if you're from an underrepresented group, the ways that that imposter syndrome can get reinforced by just subtle cues interacting with people when it's like, oh, Kristen, your hair looks awesome. Hey, so-and-so, did you hear this thing about Elasticsearch? Like, you know, like it's just little things, but when you add up all those little things, sometimes it's easy to like feel like it's me. And then I have to remind myself like, no, it's not, it's not me. Lots of people don't have degrees. Lots of people who have degrees don't know everything. Lots of people who have been around Microsoft for 20 plus years still don't know everything. And I need to lean into my strengths instead of being afraid that I'm gonna be found wanting in yeah. some imaginary exam that doesn't actually exist. Right, right. And, and then like that, as you were saying, that kind of brought back those words that I was talking about, kind of like looking at yourself from, from not recording and see some of the detrimental things that we say to ourselves that actually end up pulling us down. Like, yeah, the situation might be horrible, but then the salt that we add to that from our own you know, backgrounds and everything that ends up just dragging us down. It's an interesting perspective. And then my last question, so we hindsight, right? And the reason why I'm asking this question is because I know there are millions of people that are literally where you were like four or four some years ago. Now, if you were to go well, do it all over again, right? What are some of the, like, you know, like, I guess that's, that's those cliche. If you were to do it over again, like, I wouldn't, <laughs> you know? But if, if you were, if there was somebody that was in your shoes trying to figure, and they don't have any teaching background, so they can come up with a crazy curriculum that's step by step, step. You go here, you get this, you go there. And I mean, you know, the internet is there, so it's, that's a resource, but what are some of the things that you would advise them to consider? Hmm. They, they can't come up with that curriculum because they just don't have that background. Mm -hmm. um, but they, they probably are somebody that, that can learn, don't have to have somebody handhold them to learn, right? Or even how do they even figure out if they're, they're, they're good to like, how would they, how would you encourage or recommend to someone to figure out if they have what it takes to teach themselves? Because a lot of people, when they need to learn something, they're like, oh my God, okay, I need to go to school. But do you really? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, what would you tell that kind of person? So I feel like there are a couple interesting things in what you were saying that I wanna point out. And one of them is something I didn't realize when I started this, when I met people from ADA, every person was software engineer. That was it. My husband, software engineer. Every person I knew with a CS degree, software engineer, which happened to be a good fit for me, which is awesome and really glad I did this. But a lot of people, they hear all this learn to code and they're like, okay, so it's software engineer. And if I don't like it, I should just lean into it anyway, because this is the future where jobs are going to be. And what I learned getting into this is like tech is a giant field and there's, you know, UX, UI, there are software engineers and there are PMs and there are managers who are technical. And there are also managers who are not technical. There are PMs who are technical and PMs who are not technical. And there are communications people that like, there are just infinite positions that are all somehow related to tech. And I feel like if you start with, 
if you start with like, what do I bring to this? What do I love? What do I bring? What are my strengths? How do I lean into those strengths to bring something to tech? And then what would make me a superhero? Like, here are the things I already love. Where's there a job in tech that aligns with what I love that if I just got a little bit more of, of something, I would be amazing. I, I wish I saw more people doing that instead of just, I saw someone, they learned to code, they were successful, so I'm going to go learn to code and that's going to work for me. Like there's no one size fits all path, but it's such a big world. There's so much there. We need more people from all kinds of different backgrounds who have that drive and to just learn and keep going. And some people don't like to code and that's okay, but I would hope that the journey wouldn't stop there. There are a lot of like, you can try out some learning to code, or if you find that you're always the person in charge of projects, you're always the group leader at school, you know, you have a group project, you're the one organizing it. Like that's PM work. That's awesome. Right. Like, so I just, I don't know. I feel like I would say like, figure out ways to try out different stuff, get feedback, talk to people about what's really in there and then like lean into your strengths rather than to think that there's some kind of one size fits all. This is the only way to get into tech. I love that. I love that so much. And yeah, I have so many more questions, but I'm, I'm just going to take a break. I'm going to just pause and thank you so very much for I think, you know, I, I'm, I'm really, really glad that you didn't become that person that, oh, networking is easy. You just, you know, reach out to people on LinkedIn. It's like nobody's talking to you. Nobody's talking back to you, right? And I'm so thankful that, you know, I connected with you from nowhere. And somehow you find your heart to accept. And I told you what I wanted to do and you were on board. And I thank you so much because the things that you shared like I have no doubt that it's going to touch so many lives and like I said like it's so full circle like just hearing your story it's literally that lady that was at that stage now you're it and I thank you for that thank you so much and it's been a pleasure wish you a wonderful weekend I hope that your whole family is healthy and yeah, I read also your husband's a bunch of his articles and stuff. And and I, I wish you all the best, you know. Um, and thank you so much for hanging with me and just talking about your journey. I appreciate uh, you. Thanks so much for inviting me. It's really great. And yeah, thank you. And good luck to everybody who's figuring this out. Love it. Thank you, Kristen. Mm-hmm.